All right, anyway, mountain building. Um, so, last bit of material for this unit. Um, forces in the Earth's crust. So the Earth only has 14 mountain ranges that are higher than 8,000 meters. We, of course, have the Rockies, and then we have the Appalachian Mountains. The Appalachian Mountains not nearly as high as the, um, the Rockies, but they are still a mountain range. They are just an older mountain range that has had time to weather and kind of wear down. And they have had time to, um, oh, kind of like round themselves out. The Rockies are a younger mountain range, so that's why they're more rough and they're more jagged and they're taller. So we've already kind of mentioned some of the things that causes mountain ranges to form. Um, what is some of the causes of mountain ranges? Yeah, so the plates jamming into each other, that was what, um, what caused the Himalayas was the um, was India basically pushing into the southern part of um, the Europe continent, just running into it and pushing those mountains up. So that is the main cause of a lot of the mountain ranges is the plates pushing into each other. It's not the only thing, but it is the main cause of it. Volcan volcanoes is another thing that causes mountains to form. So when those volcanoes erupt, and it's going to cause the building of mountains as well. So over millions of years, mountains form where plates, motion, and other forces are going to uplift the crust. Weathering and erosion shape the crust into the peaks, and it's going to round some of them, it's going to make some of them bigger, and it's going to um, oh, make the valleys and things like that as the water runs off of them and as the wind makes them into shapes and um, beats against it also. But mainly it's going to be the plate movement that makes the mountains. due to temperature, pressure, rock type, and lots of time. They can fold. You might have seen this as you're driving along the road. A lot of roads have been cut through the actual rock to make the roads, and so you can see that the rocks are actually folded and bent. They don't always just snap. They can have a little bit of fold and a, lot, a little bit of wave to them. Now, sometimes they do just snap if they have too much pressure to them but they do kind of have a little bit of wave and a little bit of fold to them as well. There are several types of stress involved. There's like tension stress, compressional stress, and then just shear stress when it's just like sheared off, kind of like cut all together.
this shows like how it bends. This one is a pretty extreme example. Over millions of years, the stress can cause the rock to fold, and this is a slow process. It takes a long time for a rock to fold like that without actually breaking and snapping. It takes a lot of pressure applied over a long amount of time. If you were to just push something very quickly, it's more likely to snap. If you were to apply pressure over a very long amount of time, it's going to be more likely to bend. It's really time that you're taking into consideration. This kind of folding that you see in this rock here, that's gonna be sustained pressure over a long amount of time. That's what's gonna cause this. If you did it really fast, it's just gonna snap. Okay, So there's compressional stress, which is when you have something flat and then you push it from both ends. Um, so imagine like you have a piece of paper and you push it from both ends. It's gonna cause this kind of waviness pattern. And that is what compressional stress looks like, just like you know, a piece of paper you're pressing. It gives it that wavy pattern. And then we have the different types of mountains that can be formed. So, man, that's really tiny. Can you guys read that? No. Wow, your eyes are better than mine. Um, volcanic mountains, folded mountains, fault block, which are upward mountains, and then dome mountains. The fault block is when it's just one's going down and one's pushing up. Folded ones, that's more like a hill, really, than a mountain. But sometimes those can be really tall. 
upward is when it's moving upward and like a section is pushed upward and then of course a volcanic mountain we all know what that one is i'm gonna make that bigger. i feel like it's too tall. i feel like So this obviously volcanic mountain. So a lot of times with the volcanic mountain, there's just like one mountain out there by itself. Folded mountain. This one you can even like see the folds on it. That's pretty neat. Fault block. So we have flat on either side and then like a chunk that sticks up in the middle. So a lot of flat around it and then a piece that's kind of sticking up. And then the dome mountain, not very rounded. So an example of a dome mountain would be Mount Rushmore, would be a dome mountain. And then these other ones, again, they look a lot like rolling hills from a distance. And so those are the main examples. Um, convergent boundary mountains can create the volcanoes. We already mentioned this because at the convergent boundaries where they are running into each other, the usually this is where the ocean floor is going underneath the continental plate. And as it's going under, it's creating a lot of friction. The ocean floor is less dense than the continental plate. And so it is creating that friction as it's interacting with the continental plate, warming it up, and then there's going to be that um, heating of that magma from the plate kind of dissolving underneath. So that's going to create a lot of force and that mountain on top and a lot of volcanoes in that area. There is some ocean-ocean convergence and then ocean-continental and then there are some continent-continent ones as well. Typically with the continent-continent ones, they just create mountains and they just kind of run into each other and just make the mountains. Not so much volcanic in those cases. we already mentioned the divergent boundaries these are the mid-ocean ridges they are like the with usually in the middle of the ocean where the new new ocean floor is being created they look like mountains under the ocean they typically don't rise quite as high they're smaller mountain ranges but it is where the magma is reaching the surface becoming lava creating like volcanic ridges, volcanic ranges underneath the ocean surface. 
the lava cools very quickly once it reaches the ocean because it is coming into contact with that cold ocean water, so it's cooling down very quickly under that surface. And then we talked about those hot spots as well. Those are small mountain ranges like the Hawaii Islands. I'm sure you're seeing a trend. Most of the mountains are formed where the plates meet. And if it's not for plates, then it has something to do with the magma and the pressures of the earth and when the magma cools when it hits the surface. That is all the notes for this unit. And so our test will be on Monday. We do a school on Monday. And then I will post your new assignment in just a moment. The new assignment is you are going to create a practice test, which will include an answer key. 